And now to the final lesson on factoring. And this one shows us why factoring is useful and why we've been doing this. Yes, of course, it's fun and many of you think it's easy, but it actually has a purpose. And there is a single mathematical property that we don't think is a big deal at all that makes factoring useful. And the property is called the zero product property. And it's one of those properties that when you hear it, you're like, oh, okay, so what's the big deal? Derpy derp, I knew that was true. But it's actually super duper important. And, it's, and it says that if I have two numbers, A and B, and they're multiplied together and they equal zero, that means either A is zero or B is zero. And so you have two numbers whose product is zero, one of those numbers has to be zero. That's something we kind of take for granted, but quite literally it makes factoring Act the nicest way to solve a quadratic or any other polynomial equation for that matter. Now I'm going to remind you again that solving equations, finding x-intercepts, finding roots, and finding zeros all mean the exact same thing. All right? It's not y-intercepts either. It's x-intercepts. Okay? And that's crucial to how factoring and the zero product property and the quadratic formula all work. So when you have to solve or find an x-intercept, you have to make sure that the equation equals zero. Because the whole point of the zero product property is that you have things multiplied together that give you zero. If it's equal to four or something, then you're in trouble. Because we don't have a four product property. We have a zero product property. So make sure the equation is equal to zero. Now you had to do that anyway when you solved quadratics using the quadratic formula or when you wanted to graph it, so that's not a new step. Now the second step is you factor. And then after you factor, well, I'll show you what to do. Say I have a polynomial and I factored it and I get that it factored into x times x minus 4 equals zero. Well, what the zero product property tells me is that one of these factors has to equal zero. So by the zero product property, either x equals zero or x minus four equals zero. Well, x equals zero, that's easy. That means x is zero. x minus four equals zero. Well, I think about what value of x makes x minus four zero, and it's four. Oh look, I have solved the equation. So if I can factor, then the only extra step I have to do is that. Split my factors up, set them equal to zero, and find the actual answers. So if I have some quadratic that when factored was 9x minus 7 times 2x plus 5, well to completely solve that equation, I just have to set each of my factors equal to zero, and then solve these two little linear equations. Now at this point in the year, you've gone through five, six of algebra, and so solving a linear equation like 9x minus seven, that should seem super easy. And so I add seven, divide by nine, I get seven ninths. Here I subtract five, divide by two, I get negative five halves. So guess what my solution to my quadratic would be? Seven ninths and negative five halves. So with this final example, let's go through the whole process. I have a quadratic equation. I want to solve it. And I have to check first that it's equal to zero so that I can eventually use the zero product property. And it is equal to zero, so yay. And now I want to see if I can factor this. So I remember that in a quadratic trinomial, I look for factors of AC that add to B. In this case, a is 1 and c is 12. So I'm looking for factors of 12 that, when added together, give me negative 7, which means that they both had to be negative to make this whole thing work. So then I run through the factors of 12. I can use 1 and 12, which don't work. I can use 2 and 6, which don't work. Or I can use 3 and 4, which do work. So that means this is negative 3 and negative 4. And so if I want to factor this by grouping, I split up that term, that negative 7x term, to get negative 3x minus 4x, find GCS of these pieces, I get x times x minus 3 
I have to have an x minus 3 left over in parentheses there. So that means if I look at negative 4x, I had to factor out a negative 4 to make that whole thing work. So then x minus 3 is common, and x minus 4 were my GCFs. So this is the factored form, and of course all of these were equal to 0 because I don't just have an expression to factor, I have an equation to solve. And I'm almost done. Now all I have to do is look at each of those factors and see what solution each factor contributes. So the factor x minus 3 contributes a positive 3, and x minus 4 contributes a 4, because remember, I'm setting x minus 3 equaling to 0, and x minus 4 equaling to 0, and the 3 and the 4 is what I plug in to make those work. So my solution to my quadratic is 3 comma 4. And if I want to check, of course, I can plug those back in, or I can type that in into the graphing calculator and see what its x-intercepts were, which I, in this case I could have done in the very beginning. You know, So if you're taking the end of course exam and you're asked to solve this equation, of course you can just type it in the very beginning to see if you get nice answers. In this case, we do. Now, you may at, at this point have realized, hey, Miss Hill, why are you doing that much work? This is one of those special cases. All I had to do was find factors of 12 that add to negative 7. Well, you totally could have. If you remember all of the special cases, and you remember that this was the very first special case, then this is, you would have done actually less work than I did. But if you don't remember the special case, and you only remember one thing about factoring a quadratic, you'd have the factors of A, C that add up to B, and factoring by grouping, this is how you would do it. So when I ask you to solve by factoring, this is the most amount of work that you have to do. It actually showed a lot more work than I would have done mentally. Now it's time to see if you understand the zero product property and why factoring is useful. So I want you to find the solution sets to these three equations and write them in solution set notation, please. 